Welcome to this course on Process Dynamics and Control. My name is John Hedengren. Recently I traveled to many cities around the world giving a talk on automation and monitoring, particularly with machine learning, but also with aspects of automation and digitalization. One of the things that I saw from people around the world is that there's high interest in automation, and particularly in how to automate industrial processes to improve overall consistency and performance. And uh, this talk was about drilling automation. I also have a great research group, many students who have contributed to advancements in process control and automation with many companies that we've worked with as partners. One of the things that drives a lot of advancements in industries is the combination of three things that are sensors, actuators, and controllers. So you need these three for automation to happen. The sensors, the measurement devices, like a camera that can inspect a pipeline. Uh, you might have uh, sensors uh, for example, a LiDAR system that can uh, use lasers to be able to determine objects in its path. Uh, and you might have others as well. Many sensors that are on board unmanned aerial vehicles or drones or others to have them uh, accomplish stable flight. And then there are the algorithms as well. And the algorithms uh, combine the sensors and the actuators, and the actuators are the things that are like the motors, the pumps, the things that cause a change in the world. So the algorithms combine these two in order to automate uh, what you do with the actuator based on what you read from the sensors. Now there's been a big increase in data availability, and we've seen that with things like self-driving cars that uh, you know, over a uh, uh, self-driving car might be 25 gigabytes an hour of data. Uh, here's a wind farm that might have something like 150,000 data points every second. And many of you have probably flown on an aircraft recently and that engine was generating about 51,000 gigabytes an hour to ensure the health of that engine and also to report any problems before um, something bad happens. So we have that this increase in data across many industries. And this is an example from drilling automation where we can communicate to downhole equipment. And you can see the technology has advanced to the point that we get very high rates of data throughput. And one of the common things that you see from people in industry is that there's a a feeling of having enough data, but we just don't know what to do with it. So we want to turn that data, those sensors, into actionable information that computers can automatically respond to problems before they get out of hand. So we have software that we've written to help with this as well. Uh, we've done system biology. We've done uh, high altitude long endurance aircraft and designing that and optimizing how it flies. Uh, I've, I've worked recently on many offshore platforms and we've also applied this to traditional applications in engineering like distillation. Let me give you a, uh, just an overview of the schedule of the course. You can get to the course overview and the schedule by coming to this URL right here, apmonitor.com slash PDC. And that will open up the website and I'll go through a little bit of the information on the schedule and the overall architecture of the course. And uh, what we're going to be doing for this course, one of the main activities is how to describe the dynamics of the system, how quickly it's going to change with changes in the controller output. Okay, and we have here our process variable, or PV, and then also a set point. All right, so you have a set point output and PV. And you're trying to drive the process variable to the set point value by changing the output 
up or down. So that's our actuator right here is the output. This process variable is our sensor. And then we have our set point, which is the objective of our controller. And to reinforce some of these concepts, we are going to do a couple projects. We'll have project one, that's gonna be an Arduino temperature control lab. And then project two is going to be your choice of project. As we go through this class, there are gonna be many opportunities for active learning. In, in uh, the strategy of think, pair, share, where I'll ask a question, you'll think about it and write some notes down. Uh, pair up with somebody in the class and then share it with the group. So let me go over the course schedule with you uh, just in a little bit more detail. Okay, and I'll just bring the course website over. Here's the course website and you can see the course schedule, but I wanna focus on this first of all, where we have the controller design and if you have no data, you might develop a physics-based model. And if you have a physics-based model, you can linearize it or simulate data to then come down to one of these simplified representations of your system, like a first order plus dead time, second order plus dead time, time series, state space, or physics-based empirical model. And so to get there, we're gonna either write the equations, do a graphical fit, or use regression to obtain those. And this is the first part of the course, this upper part where we have a, um, you know, that's gonna be our modeling part of the course. And so let me just get back to this. Um, okay, so, and then the second part is gonna be the controller design. So we have a measured disturbance. If we have a measured disturbance, so we can design a feed forward or cascade controller to reject that disturbance. And if we don't, then we'll design a PID controller. And if we have an integrating system, then we'll use a P-only controller. Or if it's not an integrating system, then a PI or PID controller. We'll use stability analysis to determine the limits of where our controller gain can go. And then tuning correlations to relate these first order plus dead time models into a controller. Uh, at least the initial values for those controller parameters. And then this control performance will monitor that and adjust and tune the controller in this loop and then monitor PID performance after that. So let's go to uh, course schedule and just look at uh, some of these. We have the course divided into these four main areas where it's the modeling, dynamic modeling. This is the control and this is the theory and the math behind many of these methods. And then we have our control project. So we have a total of 42 class periods and then the final. Now with each day, we're going to have three main things. We'll have the topic quiz and the quiz. So this is the theory or the methods that we're gonna use. We'll do that in class with active learning exercises. When you get to the quiz, okay, these are low stakes quizzes that you can select and check your answers, okay, with an explanation of why it's correct or incorrect. And then here's the assignment. So you'll have uh, assignment that will be either writing out uh, equations or performing a simulation. So it's all paper-based or computer-based. And then this final one here, this one is going to be based on the TC lab uh, or the temperature control lab. I'll describe in just a little bit more detail. So for each one, we have this little device, this Arduino-based device that we'll use to reinforce the topics of the course. And you can see up here at the top, this is our main schedule. This is our learning exercise, the quiz, this is the assignment and the TC lab exercise. So for each of one of them, there's a navigation up top to help you go through the material to learn, test yourself, practice, and then practice on hardware. Come back to the schedule. Okay, and for each one, we also have Python, but also MATLAB and LiveScript templates for each one of these. So if you come here, you'll see 
the resources that are available for in Python and the resources that are available in MATLAB as live scripts. Okay, so coming uh, back to here, there are many applications of process control and you just need a sensor, actuator, and controller. You might be navigating a uh, drone or UAV. There might be something in drilling automation that we also work in or something like smart grid energy systems that you'd want to control with process control. Given this course overview and also these, these four sections of the course, Right, and let's talk just a little bit about a specific example of dynamics and control. And you should also be able to think of other examples of controllers that you interact with, like a thermostat in your home, where you have a sensor, which is the temperature sensor, the actuator, which turns on the air conditioning, air conditioner, heater, and then the controller, maybe that's a thermostat box on your wall that combines the sensor to tell when to turn on or off the actuator. But let's use another example that many of you are likely familiar with, and that is a cruise control on an automobile. So in this case, we have an input, uh, and that's going to be our gas pedal. Okay, we often call that the controller output. Okay, and you'll see why that is later, uh, because the, what the controller can adjust is the controller output. Okay, and that's not to be confused with the system output, which is the velocity. In this case, this is our measured velocity, the process variable. All right, and uh, so this dynamic system, we want to create some kind of a mathematical representation of this system to relate the input, or in this case, the controller output, to the process variable and we will use differential equations or also Laplace um, transfer functions in the Laplace domain uh, to relate what, how the output changes. So if this steps up like this, you have an increase in the gas pedal, what does the process variable do? It might have a little bit of a delay, the velocity is going to increase, and then you'll reach a final terminal velocity. So let's talk about dynamic modeling, first of all. Uh, this is automobile speed modeling where you're going to be using three types of parameters, the gain, a time constant, and a dead time for a first order plus dead time representation of that. All right, we might have something like a transfer function in the Laplace domain that relates how the gas pedal changes to the velocity. And we have our input, to output relationship. Okay, so we might just collect some data, like take the car out onto a road uh, and be able to do a step test. We start from no velocity, increase the gas pedal, observe the velocity over a period of time. And so we can either have this in Laplace domain or the time domain as a differential equation, where this is the time constant, the gain, and the dead time. So we can also model this from fundamentals as well. So here's our velocity, we have a mass, we have a resistive coefficient, and we have the gain, or this is basically the power of the engine based on a percent uh, gas pedal. And uh, so what would be, for example, the gas pedal to maintain 50 meters per second? And you might have a time delay in there as well. We'd use a momentum balance, which re reduces down to a non-conserved quantity, which is just the force balance, uh, to relate these two. Okay, and that can be related into a first order plus dead time representation of the system to relate uh, this momentum balance into a first order plus dead time system where that is going to be our time constant. All right, and then this is going to be our gain, and we have our dead time here as well, 0.5 seconds. 
All right, and once we have those, then we take our parameters from our model and convert that into some controller tuning constants. We use this maybe an initial test of the controller performance using these. All right, and there are relationships that will help us take it from a first order plus dead time model to a PID controller and give these recommended tuning parameters. So in terms of the course overview with that car example that we had, we have our controller design. So we would say, here's my output, which is my gas pedal and my velocity, which is my PV. Do I have data? Let's say you don't. First of all, you use a momentum balance to create a physics-based model. You might simulate the automobile with some step tests to come up with a graphical fit, or you could just linearize and come up with a first order plus dead time model. We're going to use this uh, model and determine are there measured disturbances, like are you measuring the incline of that vehicle as it goes up or down hills or wind or something like that that would influence the velocity. So let's say we're not measuring that. We would come this way and then say it's an integrating system. In this case, it's not. Let's describe that a little bit more later. So we could use a PI or PID controller. We'd run a stability analysis to determine where are the limits of my controller to keep me stable. And then tuning correlations like IMC or ITAE to relate these first order plus dead time model parameters into controller tuning parameters. And then we implement the PID controller and go out and test it, either in simulation or with an actual vehicle. And then monitor PID performance, and that's how we've developed our cruise control for an automobile. So I hope you enjoy this course, and um, you know there's a lot of videos there, solution videos for each of the topics, um, and look forward to this semester.